Okay, uh, thank you for your introduction. Okay, so my name is uh, Taiji Suzuki. I'm from the University of Tokyo. So today I want to talk about some generation error bound of a neural network. And uh, I, I also talk about some compress, uh, compressibility of a deep neural network using the kernel analysis. Okay, so this is our line. So um, as you know, the deep neural network model is very successful in many applications. Um, it is implemented in many industries. And, but its um, structure is rather simple. We just apply the linear, uh, uh, linear transformation and apply the um, nonlinear transformation and so on. We just repeat this uh, procedure uh, many times. But uh, as a whole, uh, we can construct a very complicated structure. So it is an in interesting point of a deep neural network model. So, but uh, our understanding to the um, deep learning model, uh, deep learning is not so uh, satisfactory. So we need more theories. So in particular, I'm interested in the phenomena that uh, the deep learning can generalize well uh, in despite uh, its huge uh, model size. So th this is uh, one uh, question in this presentation. Okay, to answer this question, so we need to analyze some complexity of the deep neural network uh, as, the, as given by um, PL, uh, Professor Piel's uh, uh, talk. So yeah. Okay, so to, to, to answer this question, so how, how about the complexity of deep, deep neural networks? So the point of analysis is like that. So uh, we look at the eigenvalues of the covariance matrix of internal layers output. For, uh, so here, so for some input x, we look at the output value from some layers, for example, the else layers. The output from the else layer is multivariate vectors. So we calculate the covariance between the, the nodes in, st in, that, in that layers. Okay, maybe the, the nodes in the else layer is uh, 250, then we have uh, 250 times 250 uh, variance in the covariance matrix. So now we compute the eigenvalues of the covariance matrix. And typically it behaves like this. So th this phenomenon is uh, um, observed by um, similar authors. So, um, the question here, mm -hmm. this, this is without any regularization. Um, uh, well, um, Okay, so th this is so in, in this example, um, uh, I use some dropout, dropout. But uh, sometimes we um, uh, we observe this phenomenon without uh, regularization. So it, it's not always, but uh, I, I, we usually observe this uh, phenomenon. Yeah. So it, it's it's a kind of a mystery. So yeah. So yes. So uh, one important notion here is that uh, there, uh, there, is a, there, uh, there is a small number of large eigenvalues, but uh, there are large number of small eigenvalues. So this means that the uh, interesting dimension, the effective dimensionality of the network is much smaller than the actual number of parameters. So this is uh, uh, one key observation from the experiments. Okay, so we want to incorporate this notion. So uh, we, we, we analyze uh, the generation analysis uh, based on these notions. So in particular, we analyze uh, how much the network can be compressed to a smaller network. So if the network can be compressed to very small networks, then the effective dimensionality is very small. So then we get a better generation error bound. And, and next, uh, we apply this theorem to uh, some model size determination and uh, uh, model compression problem. So this is the outline of my talk. Okay. Okay, so before I'm going to the, um, uh, our uh, theoretical analysis, I would like to give some literature overview, so just a brief overview. So um, it is very um, famous, uh, it is well known that the, uh, the expressive, expressive power of a deep neural network uh, going up in an exponential way as the number of layers is going up. So if we have many layers, then its capacity or the expressive power is very large. So now, in some situations, uh, um, instead of uh, uh, making the network wider, so making the network uh, deeper is more express, uh, is more effective. So the express power has, has been characterized by many uh, uh, new, uh, uh, mathematical notions like uh, uh, hyperplane arrangement and the tensor uh, rank and the uh, algebra topology and something like that. So then uh, th these authors, uh, all of these authors concluded this, uh, uh, this, this, uh, this, this notions. Okay, so this is an, an easy example. So H, is, so here H is a uh, uh, very simple um, piecewise linear functions. So suppose that we apply H and K times, then we get uh, sawtooth functions. 
Okay, so the, the sawtooth function has a two to the power of k uh, edges. So it is very complicated. If we, we realize this function by a shallow neural network, we need the exponentially large number of uh, units. So in, in this case, uh, the um, deep neural network is more um, expressive. So um, based on these uh, observations, uh, there is uh, some interesting fact that the quadratic function can be um, approximated by the weighted sum of uh, these sawtooth function. So actually, the, uh, the approximation error drops um, exponentially uh, with respect to the uh, number of layers. Okay, so this is uh, used to show the minimax optimal uh, optimality to estimate a smooth function by deep neural network. Okay, so as for the generation error bound, there have been many, many papers. So, so these are just um, the part of that. Um, uh, so in this presentation, I'm interested in the fast learning rate of a generation error bound. So the fast learning rate means that it is faster than one over square root n convergence rate. The one over square root n is a typical convergence rate given by a Rademacher complex analysis. But uh, uh, we use uh, so-called uh, local Rademacher complexity to obtain a faster learning rate. So um, uh, there are many papers, but uh, the most relevant uh, uh, research is, is, that is here. So Francis Bach showed some connection with the uh, kernel quadrature rule and the uh, random Fourier feature. And so it can be seen as uh, constructing a single layer neural network. So um, another related topic is uh, given by uh, Montavo and uh, Professor Kraus, um, who, who analyzed some kernel PCA uh, for deep neural network. Okay. So now we are going to uh, the more details. Okay, so the problem setting is very simple. We are just interested. In, uh, we consider a um, um, nonlinear, um, non-parametric uh, uh, regression problem. The, uh, the output, output y i is given by f o x i plus noise xi. i. The xi, xi i is an iid Gaussian noise, and x i is distributed from some distribution p x in an iid sense. So we want to estimate the true function f4 from the data xi and yi from i equal 1 to n. So we evaluate the estimation accuracy by uh, L2 norm, so the, the, the population L2 norm. So the, the distance between f hat and f2 uh, measured by L2 norm. So this is, this is, a, this is a performance measure. So yeah, as a result, we will obtain a fast learning rate, uh, which is represented by an uh, interesting effective dimensionality. Okay. And, and we, we characterize this, this notion by the compression ability of the network. So, so I, repeat the, 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 I repeat the results, but if the network can be compressed very well, then it will generate as well. Okay, so to define the effective dimensionality, so I, I use the, the notion of degree of freedom. So degree of freedom is defined by like this. So here we want to compress the f hat, the trained network f hat, to a smaller one, so f sharp. So so f sharp is the compressed network. So um, here is some notation. So f hat is represented by the parameters of w hat l and b hat l. So, so w hat and b hat are the parameters. And capital F, capital F hat is the output to the l layer uh, before the activation of the, uh, the, the trained network of f hat. And ml is the width of the l layer of f hat. So the parameter WL is uh, ML plus one times ML uh, size. So yeah, based, uh, using this notion, notations, so we can define the covariance matrix uh, between the output to the Lth layer. The covariance matrix is defined by like this. So here, eta is, uh, sorry, the eta is an activation function. Eta is an activation function. Eta of f hat L minus one xi is the vector, so the ML dimensional, ML dimensional uh, vectors. So, uh, the covariance matrix is given by like this. So this is ML times ML uh, covariance, mat covariance matrix. So here we calculate the eigenvalue of the, the um, covariance matrix, so which is denoted by mu hat to JL. Mu hat to JL is the J's largest eigenvalue of the covariance matrix. So using the eigenvalues, the degree of freedom is defined by like this. So here, lambda is the any positive real number. So, so uh, lambda is some given positive real number. So, so I will explain what is lambda later on. Okay. Okay. So this is on some intuition of uh, degree of freedom. So this is the eigenvalues. We sum up. Uh, we 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 sum up the eigenvalues of from smallest one. Uh, we sum up the smallest eigenvalues up to lambda. Then the, the degree of freedom is uh, like uh, uh, remaining num uh, the number of remaining eigenvalues like this. 
Okay. In other words, we want to um, we want to um, approximate the uh, uh, covariance matrix by um, r r uh, by a low rank matrix which has a rank of uh, the degree of freedom. So then, in, in that in that situation, that we can um, um, approximate a covariance matrix with a uh, um, um, error lambda. Okay, so um, now, so I, I, I want to tell something about the connection to the kernel. So, the, yeah, the degree of freedom has a good connection to the kernel uh, function. So. Yeah, and we can see that the deep neural network is a way to, uh, deep learning is a way to construct a kernel function in a layer-wise manner. So in each layer, we can define a kernel function. Okay, so, so remember, remind that the output to the else layer is denoted by the eta of a hat L minus one. So um, we take the inner product between the, uh, between the output for x and x prime, okay? So, that, okay, so the, the output to the else layer is something like a future map from x to some, uh, some, some, some future space. So uh, we, take, we just take the inner product between the x and x prime, then we get a counter function. We, it is easy to see that th this function is a, a symmetric and a positive definite. So we can define the RKHS uh, corresponding to this uh, kernel function defined on in the else layers. The, the RKHS has an explicit formula like this. Uh, the e e each element in the RKHS can be given by just a linear combination of the output to the else layer. So the, the, R the RKHS norm of this element is equivalent to the L2 norm of the, the weight uh, vector W. So, uh, so in, in that sense, we can see that the output to the next layer, from, from L's layer to L plus one's layer, is an um, um, element in the RKHS. So the function to the next layer is an um, element of RKHS. So, um, so here's a connection to the kernel, uh, a, a connection between kernel and the covariance matrix. So, um, if we, so now we decompose the kernel function in an L2 space, the, the, the L2 space, but in an empirical, uh, empirical, L, uh, empirical distribution. So L2 distribution corresponds to the empirical distribution. Okay, so um, we have this um, uh, eigenvalue and the eigenfunction decompositions. So uh, we can show that the eigenvalue of the kernel function is the same as that of a covariance matrix. So there is uh, some connection between the kernel and the covariance. So uh, we can make the problem to the, that of the, 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 the kernels in the, in, in, the, in the world of a kernels. Okay. So this is some um, uh, degree of freedom in uh, real, uh, real networks. So uh, we consider the VZZ13 trained on Cypher 10 data set. So the vertical axis is lambda, the horizontal axis is the degree of freedom. So you see that even for small lambda, the degree of freedom is not so large. So this means that the interesting dimensionality of the uh, network is not so large. Okay, so they're using this. Uh, um, okay. So which one is the, the input layer? Ah, okay. okay. Um, this is the input layer, yeah. and uh, then, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, layer one, two, three, and four, five, and seven. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Is there any question? Uh, this before training. Ah, before training, uh, it is larger. So, so during the training, the degree of freedom is getting smaller and smaller. So uh, I don't know exactly why is it. Um, no, I mean, you can just take random weights and the degree of freedom is two, three, 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 three. Oh, you'll, you'll get, you'll get uh, uh, right, right. Right. Okay. Speaking with the differentialization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so now we go to the next, next slide. Okay, so now, so we want to um, analyze how well the network can be compressed. So th that, that, that is uh, represented in this slide. So let capital F is a um, model of a network with a norm constraint. So now we suppose that the uh, estimator is picked up from uh, this uh, model. So for example, we can consider empirical risk minimizer in this uh, model. So now we want to compress the trained network f part to a sh smaller network f sharp. So, um, 
suppose that we have uh, some positive real number, lambda L, so which, is, which is given. For, for that lambda L, the degree of freedom is defined by, the, by this, yeah, L, yeah, uh, degree of freedom is defined. So uh, suppose that the, the size of the complex network ML sharp is uh, lower bounded by the degree of freedom. So this is our assumption. So in that, in that uh, under these assumptions, there is a, a network F sharp uh, having the widths ML sharp in the L layer, such that the distance, the L2 distance, the uh, empirical L2 distance between F hat and the compressed network F sharp is bounded by uh, basically the sum over square root of lambda L. So, uh, so this means that we first, of, first we specify lambda L, so then the degree of freedom is uh, determined, then the uh, width of the compressed network is determined. So we can see that if lambda L is small, then if lambda L is small, then the degree of freedom is going up, then the, the compressed network should be large to, to satisfy this uh, condition. So yeah, so yeah, uh, that's right, that's right. So uh, in that sense, if, if the eigenvalue is go going down very rapidly, so then um, we can um, approximate the trained network effort by a very small network. Question. Yeah. Uh, you have a, this expression, the max over J. Max? Is the matrix norm? Yes. Uh, this one? Uh, no, this is not a matrix norm. Uh, this is, an, how to say, uh, mixed norm, something like a mixed norm. Yeah, this is not a spectral norm. Yeah. So, uh, this expression, the max over J, is there is something confusing here. So, suppose you have, a, you have data that you widen, right, before you feed into the network. Yeah. And you impose a constraint on the weights that you learn that they belong to some manifold. Let's say they yes. belong to a stiff manifold. So you, you learn only location or unitary matrices. No, no, no we, we don't. No, I'm assuming. Ah, OK, I see. So in that case, would that be according to your theory that you do not compress the internet? Uh, if you use a unitary matrix. Yes. Would that mean that you cannot compress the network? It depends on the distribution. So yes. this is very the distribution yes. dependent. In that case, if, if the inputs are white, okay. and your matrices are homogeneous, okay. then the covariance matrices will not behave this way. Like if you look at the distribution okay. of the values of your covariance matrices, okay. it will not be degenerated. So basically, um, if, if, you take a, if you take a white data and you, you, you rotate it, it remains white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to what extent? Is the fact that you apply in the intermediate steps the nonlinearities would that change the distribution? I doubt it. It actually does. So the reason why I'm asking this question is because in most of the most of the architectures people use fractional normalization. Ah, yeah. And fractional normalization is supposed to have the same effect, except that it is assuming implicitly that the covariance matrix is diagonal. So except that fact, it is supposed to have the same effect. So is this really true in most of the papers that people are using? Um, I, don't, I don't think uh, batch normalization is a time normalization. So it, it's, it it's just a scaling the, the, um, uh, the mean and the variance of each. Uh, yes. No, so, so, so it's it doesn't matter. Like okay. If we make the uh, variance is diagonalized, then we cannot we cannot compress very much. And also, I mean, the, there's there's also there's the question of the dimensionality or the effect of dimensionality, but there's also the signal to noise ratio because you could compress, but you could still leave a lot of noise. Yes. So there's a trade-off between both. Yes. So, so um, I mean, in the work that was cited, um, you can observe, depending on the architecture people have been using, yes. um, you know, it may be better to use a rather a high-dimensional uh, structure with a high noise suppression, or you could use a very low-dimensional structure but you allow for some noise. And this may change layer after layer, the this, this strategy that is being used. Practically after training, you can find out about that. Is it okay? Yeah. Oh, also, it depends on the structure of the network. So, yeah. It heavily depends on the structure. And also on the regularization. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, of course. And some implementation maybe depending on that, depending on the uh, optimization too. Maybe Adam and uh, Omet SD. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so um, 
Okay, so uh, okay, so this is an approximation error bound. So um, uh, uh, in, in this theorem, I have assumed that some assumption on the activation function like this. Uh, we assume that scaling variance on the activation function and the eta is a uh, one Lipschitz continuous. But I, I skip this. Yeah. And, and we also assume some other uh, assumptions to get uh, generation error bound. So what I ob obtained is just some comprehension ability of the network. But ne next we give some uh, generation error bound. Okay, so here. Um, F star is the closest point to the true function in the in the in the in the model F. So the distance between F star and F O is given by uh, the gamma bar. Okay, so and so using this notation, so we assume something here, but uh, this is more um, intuitive. So um, this is yeah. Uh, so here we assume that around the the train network F flat, the empirical risk is uh, somehow flat. So that, that means that the empirical risk is bounded by the quadratic function uh, with respect to f hat minus f. And we also assume that the f hat, that the, the empirical risk of f hat is not so much large. So compared with the f star, the, the gap between f hat and f star is uh, up to theta hat to n, in uh, almost, uh, almost surely. So uh, under these assumptions, we obtain this generation error bound. So uh, this, this theorem shows the generation error for the complex network F sharp. Okay. And okay, so here the, the we measure the, the L2 distance between F sharp and the, the true function. So this is bounded by these quantities. So um, basically the first term is the uh, okay, so so the, the the these two terms are the main terms. The first term is denoted by delta one n, so which which is defined by this. So delta one n is the, uh, the approximation error bound. Okay, so the second term delta two n m sharp is defined by like this. So this is the uh, the number of parameters of of f sharp divided by a uh, sample size. So uh, so. The first term, this is the bias term, and the second term is the variance term. So there is uh, some trade-off between the bias and the variance. So okay, so if lambda l is very small, then the delta one. So lambda l is very small, then delta one n is uh, very small. So, but on the other hand, if lambda l is small, then the degree of freedom can be large. So in this situation, m l sharp should be large uh, be because because of these uh, conditions. So uh, then the Delta two n m sharp could be uh, large, so uh, so there is a bias and variance trade-off uh, between the first term and the second term. So I I if we balance these two terms, then we get a good uh, generation error bound. Okay. So uh, here, so we have assumed some flatness on the on the landscape, but uh, if we don't assume this flatness, uh, we get uh, worse uh, upper bound. But uh, there, there there still appears a trade -off, uh, bias and variance trade-off between. The delta one n and the delta two n. Okay, so here is uh, some comparison between uh, the naive bound and uh, our bound. Okay, so letting lambda l to be zero, so the the generation error of f hat is uh, bounded by like this. This is just a um, number of parameters divided by the sample size. Uh, this is very. Um, th this can be uh, easily derived by um, classical method. And as for the generation error bound for f sharp. Uh, we obtain this upper bound. So there is a bias and a variance trade-off. By balancing the bias and the bias trade-off, then we get a much smaller um, bound than this naive bound. So in particular, if the, the, the degree of freedom is very small, in, in other words, the eigenvalue drops, be, drops very rapidly, so then uh, the ML sharp ca can be very small. So yeah. Yeah. This question, here in the bias term, the yeah. square root of lambdas. Yes. Is it the lambda side value for every layer, or is it? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, okay, so lam okay. Lambda L is your uh, lambda L. Your uh, is it is the line value, or is it uh, your uh, the term you defined? Oh, sorry. So uh, no, lambda L is uh, any possible real numbers. So lambda L is not an eigen value. So, so I, I should say explicitly. So lambda L is any possible real numbers. Okay, so maybe so I go back to the, this theorem. Lambda L is some given any possible numbers. So then, um, well, so uh, um, uh, the this this upper bound uh, is uh, valid uh, valid for any lambda L. So, but uh, to obtain the tight bound, we take we, we we obtain the tight bound just minimizing this term, the right hand side with respect to lambda L. 
I is it clear? Okay, so lambda L is uh, any number, so any positive real number. So, okay, so, okay, so oh, we should balance these two terms with respect to lambda L, but uh, maybe it, it's too different. So, um, so, uh, so this is one example that uh, optimizes the balances, the bias and the variance trade-off. Okay, suppose that the eigenvalue drops in this rate, the mu j is uh, bounded by j to the minus one over SL. The SL is some positive real numbers, so if, if mu j drops in a uh, polynomial uh, rate, then the, uh, the degree of freedom can be bounded by like this. So by balancing the first term and the second term, we obtain this convergence rate, okay? This convergence rate. So if S is small, <laughs> if S is small, uh, so this convergence rate is faster than S 1 over square root of n. So in that sense, this, is this is can be seen as a fast running rate. Um, so yeah, and, and uh, as for the three-layer neural network, so we obtain this convergence rate. So this is a minimax optimal rate of the kernel method. So in that sense, our, our, our analysis has uh, some connection with uh, kernel analysis. But uh, yeah, okay, so, but I don't have so much time, so <laughs> I, I should skip many uh, slides. So okay, so this is uh, our theories. Okay, so this is our theory. So um, uh, our uh, the theory tells that the degree, degree of freedom gives a good um, um, measure of uh, the, the effective dimensionality. So I, I uh, based on this theorem, so we can consider some comprehension method. Okay, so, so I, I want to have a smaller network than the, the, the original networks. To, to find such a good uh, um, small network, so we, we just need to consider to solve this kind of a regression problem, problem in each layers. So, um, well, um, what to say? <laughs> so, uh, anyway, so, um, so following this, <coughs> uh, following this algorithm, algorithm, the complex network satisfies this upper bound, so which is the same as the, the, that we have uh, obtained in the previous slide. So yeah, so we so we have applied uh, that, that comprehension method to some data set. So now we are going to the numerical experiments. Okay, so first of all, so we see the VGZ network trained on the Cypher 10 uh, data set. So this is a distribution of the eigenvalue in each layers. Okay, so for example, in the layer nine, so the eigenvalue drops very rapidly. So the vertical axis is a log order. So you see very fast uh, drop, uh, decreasing rate of eigenvalues. So here we have applied our method to this network. Then, um, okay, so the horizontal axis, the comprehension rate, uh, but even if the parameter size is uh, one fifth, uh, pa the performance is not so much uh, deteriorated. And also our method can be applied to uh, compress the segnet. The segnet is uh, like a network that can, seg that can execute some segmentation of the, uh, the street scenes. So, um, the segment has some branches, so it has very com complicated structures, so it has many branches, but uh, our method can be applied to this kind of uh, um, network. So uh, we, see, we see that even if the, the computation speed is, uh, uh, computation speed for uh, new uh, images is uh, four times faster than the original network, so it, it, it is also uh, better, it also shows a better performance in this uh, uh, situation. So, uh -huh. I, I yeah. have a question. So, uh, once, once you do the compression here, yeah. you relearn the function, right? Ah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I should say that. So, we did fine tuning. Okay. Yeah. If you know that, if you don't do that, it's not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, because uh, I used some um, approximated method, so it's not a, a completely uh, a true method. So. So after after roughly uh, solving that after fine tuning when you compress after you fine tune can you really say that you you have a function like you are using the function that is compressed from the previous one you have how far do you move from the previous solution you really um, well also it, it's not I, I think it's it's no problem so to express the function which is the same as the original network the, we just need the, the very more complex network. So in that sense, the effective dim dimensionality of the original network is uh, small. So, yeah. Uh, okay. 
sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I discussed later. So uh, this is a result for ImageNet data set. So yeah, it, it works very well. So uh, in particular, the compressed network has shows uh, better performance than the original networks. This is because by compression, uh, we can uh, avoid our fittings. Yeah. yeah okay. So yeah, here's the conclusion. So I have shown some generation error bound for deep neural network and and yeah, uh, the, that phenomenon. So the generation error bound was uh, characterized by the degree of freedom. And I also propose a simple compression method. So I, I'm sorry, I could not uh, explain the details of the compression method. But anyway, so it works well. So yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions and the comments? I have one question. So, is there any relationship with compression rate and the how deep of new neural network? I see. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's a very difficult uh, question. So uh, now, um, well, um, well, yeah. I, I think. I think. Uh, uh, it, oh, sorry, sorry. It, it, it's, it's not trivial. Not it's sure. not trivial. It's not sure. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. In the experiment, um, the, uh, the degree of freedom will, uh, is large in the uh, uh, high layer. So we. Uh, uh, ah, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. You, you mean this one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that then. In the uh, optimized uh, 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 compression network, uh, a large number of units in the higher layer? Uh, it's not uh, uh, true. Um, for example, uh, in the VCD network, the last layer is a fully connected layer. So the original size is uh, 1024, but the uh, degree of freedom was 10. So there was much redundancy. Uh, so it, it depends on the structure and the function. So once it it is wi uh, wider, then uh, sharp, uh, smaller. So uh, I have some, such a phenomenon in, in this example. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but the edge half uh, is the patterns that it will be able to you uh, suppose uh, uh, <coughs> the number number of units is uh, five times n, so it should be large in the higher in the time. Maybe we can discuss the details uh, yeah, yeah. by dinner and coffee break. Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much.